Hi everybody, this is Rob Packard from Medical Device Academy. I'm promoting a new webinar that I just recorded today. It's post-market clinical follow-up uh, requirements, or PMCF. We just recorded the webinar because we had a client that needed help with post-market uh, surveillance requirements, creating a plan, creating reports, creating a post-market clinical follow-up study for their products. They had a technical file that was um, for European C marking, and they didn't have that requirement, and their notified body identified that as a major nonconformity. All the notified bodies are paying more attention to this now, and you're going to see that more and more frequently. But after they were reading some of the requirements and they saw what they didn't have, they said, do you have something for us that would be some sort of a template or example that we can follow as well? So they've already uh, asked for this training, but in addition to that, I'm also going to be creating a, a template for people. So sign up for the webinar, and you'll also get as one of the automatic responders, you get a free template. So please sign up and uh, enjoy the rest of the presentation here. It'll be very short, but the webinar is much longer. So this first slide here, this is the first slide of the presentation, and it shows you an example of what post-market surveillance is, or post-market clinical follow-up. And this was taken from a Japanese um, uh, presentation that was presented many years ago about trying to show what is residual risk, what is post-market surveillance versus what is pre-market uh, studies. So you have pre-market that would be prior to launch of your product, and then post-market, and the residual risk is between those two, and that's how they articulated the concept of residual risk and post-market surveillance. This next slide shows people what post-market clinical follow-up is and what the purpose is. And I indicate in these three bullets here what are the some of the pre the, the primary reasons why you're conducting post-market clinical follow-up studies. So look at rare complications that you couldn't get in a small clinical study, look at things only seen in a larger user population or patient population, and look at things that are only seen after a long-term use. You're not going to do a 20-year clinical study before launching a product. This next slide shows you what the clinical, what the post-market clinical follow-up current requirements are. I actually give the reference to the guidance or to the regulation. It's 9342EEC Annex 10 1.1C. I also indicate where the requirements are in the AIMD and uh, the IVD doesn't have it, but I indicate later in the presentation where it is in the new regulation. So this covers both old regulations and proposed regulations that will be released in 2016, if not sooner. And then. I also point out none of these requirements are new. It was in existence prior to 2010. Um, it was in the guidance document in 2010 that was put up by the Global Harmonization Task Force. They released a MedDev that would be a formal guidance in 2012. The enforcement of it is what's new. That's it for today's presentation. Hope you sign up and uh, you'll get that autoresponder with the free uh, template for post-market surveillance plans.